welcome back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time, and it's in! An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back! And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level! And it's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club! Well, good evening and a very warm welcome to Robins TV. Can Bristol City avenge the result up at Coventry earlier on this season and make it five wins from five at home? And hopefully back-to-back -back wins as well. It's a year since Nigel Pearson joined the dugout at Bristol City. Can he mark his anniversary as well in style? Coventry City come into this game off the back of a late winner against Barnsley at the weekend. So I'm sure Mark Robbins and his side will be buoyed by that result and comfortable in the knowledge that they think they can get a result tonight as well. I'm delighted to say that joining me here in the studio is Neil Swift. Neil, uh, off the back of a 4-0 victory as well for the under 23 earlier on a fantastic display by the the own robins yeah very good day very good day so let's see if we make it a double today and you know get the first team winning as well back to back wins for us as well yeah absolutely and, and some standout performances there as well you know the likes of prince henry obviously picking up a, a hat trick today and we saw duncan idahen as well who's been a player that's been involved with the match day squad for nigel pearson too. it's nice we had a few of the boys who's been up training with the first team come back down uh, still based as 23 players but they, you know they conduct themselves in such a manner that they've learned up there and they're applying their trade and they lift the lads around them so i can honestly say the whole game we didn't have I don't think anyone dipped below 100% though, it's absolutely superb. And it's a real opportunity as well now, you just feel, for, for those, I guess the new crop of under-23s, because we've seen the likes of Sam Pearce and Sam Bell, these players moving on, going on loan spells as well, but it's great to see the likes of Seb Palmer Holden, for instance, coming through and these, these unknown names each week. Well, basically, there is a conveyor belt, which is, which is a good thing for the club. Um, they've got a pathway. That's from all the way through the academy, 23s football in, into the first team. The proofs in the pudding, you know, you can see Josh Hours, Sam Pearson, Sam Bell. They're all, they've all had their t opportunities um, and we've had success with them. And there's no one greater than that at the minute with Alex Scott and Antoine. So happy days. Absolutely. And we could see actually up at the uh, HPC, we covered the game on Robins TV earlier on. The, I think the first team were watching on from the, the canteen up there. You could see a lot of, uh, of the training kits behind the windows there watching on. So looking ahead to tonight, obviously a quick turnaround from the weekend. Will Nigel Pearson have had a chance to really tweak much? Or has it all, it all been about recovery leading into this? I think they'll, they'll, they'll look at building on what they did well. Because I thought they played very well against Middlesbrough. They were a very good team um, and we, we conducted ourselves very well on the day. An emotional day with the Ashton Gate 8. We raised, rose to the occasion and, and it, the whole day was really good from start to finish. The gaffer at the end of the day is, is, is going to build on that. I know he's not happy at conceding the goal again, but we got the win. So I think you've got to take a little bit of bittersweet with that one. Yeah. But. Absolutely. Well, hopefully City can grab the clean sheet tonight. Let's have a quick look at the teams early on before the game gets underway, starting with Mark Robbins' side. Hasn't really felt the need to make wholesale changes, but Ben Sheaf uh, drops down to the bench and Gustavo Hamer comes in to replace him. For the Derby County man, Martin Waghorn also misses out and takes his place on the bench. He's replaced by Jake Bidwell, who joined from Swansea City in the January transfer window. Former Bristol City, Loney Todd, Kane is in the starting 11. There's a funny story about his time at Bristol City, which I'm sure some City fans will remember. Uh, and a side that's led as well by Kyle McFadzine, who at the age of 35 is the, the bedrock of this Coventry City side. And then on the bench tonight, Fabio Tavares and Jordan Shipley make up the substitutes. As for Nigel Pearson, just one change. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, to the starting 11. He alluded to it on Saturday. Eamon Benarous comes in. He replaces Joe Williams, who they're managing back to full fitness, understandably. Uh, no doubt he'll be itching to play tonight anyway, uh, but they're just ensuring that the injury is managed correctly this time. It means uh, an incredibly young midfield three with Masengo and Alex Scott in there as well. Sam Bell keeps his spot at wing back. Jada Silva comes in on the opposite side. Dan Bentley back between the sticks, of course, too. And then Vyman Semenyo Martin approaching 50 goals and assists between the three of them. They'll be hoping they'll be on scoring form again tonight. And then on the bench, of course, Robbie Cunway keeps his spot after a cameo with 10 minutes remaining on Saturday. 
Right, let's hear from the man that picked today's side. It's Nigel Pearson. Nigel, a quick turnaround for your side tonight here, back again at Ashton Gate. What are you looking for from your group today? Well, another win, but it'll be uh, another game in which we yeah, have respect for our opponents. They're a decent side, they've had a good season so far. Um, I think they'll probably change their way of playing from the weekend just to try and cope with our little tactical changes. So, yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Um, and I also think it's a game which our players are aware of uh, the fact that really we we let them off the hook at their place. So I think there is an element of wanting to put that right too. Um, so look, it's a, a nice nice result the weekend for us, a good occasion, but of course it's back to business now. Eamon Benarouche comes into the midfield to freshen things up. Is that just a case of managing Joe's minutes? It is. Uh, Joe's not completed a Saturday to Saturday um, week of 290 minutes so it's it's too big a risk from such a tough game at the weekend and again tonight um, he understands that and uh, you know that that's our job to try and manage uh, his expectations in regard to that and also Eamon's absolutely chomping at the bit so to speak he's he's had um, he broke into the side and has not had a lot of time uh, recently so he's really looking forward to playing tonight um, so apparently, somebody told me earlier, apparently the, 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 the three in midfield that we got today um, have an average age younger than the three that played for the under-23s this afternoon. So that's quite an interesting one, eh? Touching on that, <laughs> those, those three in the middle, very exciting trio. Yeah, yeah, very Thomas and Tim behind them, providing yeah. that nice bit of experience and buffer behind them as well. I think both centre-backs have been playing well, even when the result has not been... Um, particularly good for the team. Um, well, it's always about the team performing. That's the big thing for us. And uh, I would like to think that our fans here in particular can see the players are trying always to, to be positive, and that's really what we want. Um, our results have never been consistent enough throughout the season to say that we're having a good uh, a really good season but we are definitely uh, improving standards and I think that's something that we want to build on but of course our efficiency is really what's going to uh, determine where we finish this year so uh, it'd be nice to get another positive result tonight. Best of luck tonight. Yeah cheers thanks. Nigel Pearson there with George West pitch side. And of course, Bristol City have the chance to make it five home wins from five tonight following their heroics at the weekend against Middlesbrough. Let's relive the action. That's a good touch though from Chris Martin. Here's Semenyo. Gets up beyond Tavernier, shrugs him off, needs to pick a pass. Andy yes. Hyman. And it's that combination again. Semenya with the pass, Vyman with the finish, 16 goals for the season for him and Bristol City are off to a flyer. Brilliant, I think it was a forward run from deep from, was it Chris Martin? A real deep run, penetrating, pick the ball up and then we, we just build the play from there. Anton absolutely ragdolls him here. And calm to pick somebody out for a great finish. Right place at the right time, Andy Vyman again. An absolutely superb finish from Vyman, taken first time, but... Here's Semenyo, can Bristol City build from this position? Now Scott pokes it away for the defender, excellent from Bristol City's youngsters, still going here, Semenyo with the shot! Yes! What a fantastic finish from Anton Semenyo! <laughs> a celebration to match, Bristol City, two goals to the good. Good. I thought the referee was going to give a foul. <laughs> he did well to play on again. Ashton Gate erupts, and rightly so. But it all comes again from Alex Scott and his endeavour there to keep hold of the ball. Yeah. Oh. Another assist for Andy Vyman. Semenya was the provider in the first half. This time, he's the goal scorer. It's a lovely finish. Great finish. Some talent, Anton Simone. Lovely, intricate play by the lads. Now we've been really good with this all game now. we just got to make sure we see these out. 
In it goes. Crooks rises highest, nods home. Middlesbrough have the goal back. A rallying cry to those away fans and they feel as though there's a point at least for them here. There goes Bristol City's clean sheet and that will really hurt after such resilient defending as you've said. Conceding that late goal there, Neil. But crucially, Bristol City held out when at times earlier on this season they've, they've not been able to see it over the line. I thought you expected it to win. <laughs> <laughs> we take the win and move on. Yeah, um, yeah we conceded at the end again, but uh, it's three points on the bag and that's what we've got to take. Isn't it? And just looking at the team tonight for Bristol City, Eamon Benaroos comes into the starting eleven ahead of Joe Williams. Yeah. But Nigel Pearson, as we discussed off screen, will be fairly confident in the knowledge he's got Alex Scott there that's been so reliable. You can almost afford to bring another youngster in again, you know, despite the fact that their average age is so young. Yeah, again, you touched on the consistency and I think that will come with youth. Inconsistency will come with youth. So one day they'll perform, the next they won't. But I think in Eamon, Eamon's a born winner, first and foremost. Scott, exactly the same. And then you've got an old head in Masengo there that's going to be looking after them. I think the midfield will be like that. I said it'll be an entertaining three, uh, three in the midfield there. It be, might be a little bit harder if Masengo is going to be more disciplined, I think, and it's maybe sit in that holding role, which we'll have to wait and see. And so. immense pride for you as well. Obviously, you've come from the under 23s this afternoon. You've seen the players that you've, you've coached re more recently, you know, out there scoring goals as well. And then you get to come tonight, and it's a side that's full of youth that have come through the ranks too. Again, it's with Sam Bell at right back as well. It's, yeah. It is a potential under 23 side. So, yeah, massive positive, which just goes to show the, the pathways out from the club from top all the way through, which is uh, a good sign, a very good sign. Well, Sam Bell obviously continuing uh, in the starting 11 tonight. We're going to take a short break now, but afterwards we'll be hearing from one third of WSM. Chris Martin, he'll be talking to Robins TV. Welcome back to Robins TV. Not long to go now until kickoff. Bristol City against Coventry tonight with Bristol City looking to make it five home wins from five. And you'll see Neil here expertly holding our Lotto scratch card uh, tickets, which if you're at the gate today and you're watching us, I guess on YouTube or, or Facebook as well, or just checking into the stream nice and early, you can get your hands on one of these Lotto scratch card tickets, which are signed by the Ashton Gate 8 as well. So make sure when you head down, look out for those that are selling these in the comments. 
concourse tonight and get your hands on one of those. But for now, um, we're going to head over to Chris Martin. Dan White caught up with him earlier on this week at the HPC. Chris, welcome back to Robins TV. Today, we're going to be asking some pretty simple questions, but hopefully finding out about the best and the worst of your football career so far. Um, you've played in some big games, so let's start with the best atmosphere that you've oh. had in your career, the best atmosphere you've played in. Um, played in a few. One that springs to mind, actually, was a game um, for Scotland at Celtic Park against the Republic of Ireland. Um, obviously, the connection there... Um, it's crazy, and obviously the rivalry too. Um, both countries. I, th I think it was a European Championship qualifier. Um, both in the same group, managed to win. I came on in the game actually, we won one nil. But yeah, the, the national anthems and just the noise around the place for the whole game was incredible. There's something about when those home nations play each other, isn't there? Yeah, it was, and obviously being at Celtic Park with the Republic of Ireland coming over and stuff. Obviously, a huge following. Go to Celtic games every single week, anyway. So yeah, it was. Um, yeah, that was pretty special. Yeah, I mean, we won't ask you for the worst atmosphere, but can you remember the worst pitch that you've played on? Ooh, uh, played on a few. <laughs> um, I remember Blackpool's not being very good um, a few years back. Um, obviously struggling a little bit with the weather up there. So, uh, <laughs> we saw that this season, it was a bit grim. And the worst weather? Um, Blackpool was up there with a shout the other day, yeah. actually. Um, Peterborough was pretty grim, wasn't it, with the, with the rain? I actually yes. thought Peterborough might get called off at one point. Um, I remember playing, actually, when I was on loan at Luton. We we got the game called off after seven minutes because of snow. Wow. So we, we went out. Everyone was like, I'm not sure if this is going to be on or off. <laughs> snow was coming down pretty heavy. The ref said, now we're going to start. And then seven or eight minutes in, he was like, yeah, nah, we can't, oh, we can't carry on. The worst. Okay, well, let's talk about this, this current team then. So who has the best dress sense in the squad? Um, apart from myself, obviously. obviously. Well, of yeah. course. So. Uh, Callum's pretty smart. Callum O'Dowd, okay, he nice. wears decent gear. Don't know. A lot of the lads is not not to my taste. No. A lot of the youngsters wear some rather interesting yeah. garments, shall we say? <laughs> uh, so yeah, my taste is a bit plainer than that. I'm a bit older, so fair I can't enough. get away with some of those bright colours and yeah. logos and stuff. That's fair enough. And in terms of the music in the changing room, then who has the worst taste in music? Mm. Yeah, the only one I can think of is Joe Williams. It's just like pure house music. Wow. Um, as a playlist, I'm not allowed to say the, say the words because <laughs> um, they're a bit inappropriate, but um, it's a Scouse playlist. And okay. Yeah. Sometimes if you're in the mood for it, you know, but mm. it's a little bit much. His name comes up quite a bit in the. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other people because most people don't have their music. There's only one or two that put the music on, and it's normally pretty safe, kind of current stuff. Yeah. So. I'd like a bit more variety, if I'm yes, honest. Yes, that's fair enough. Uh, and finally, Chris, we want to know the best goal that you've scored. Ooh, it's a tough one, actually. I've scored a few good ones. Uh, there's a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, one that springs to mind is a free kick for Derby against Bournemouth. Um, top corner. Nice. That was, um, yeah, that one sticks out. The one I scored against Portsmouth in the Cup last year was quite nice, actually, um, for City. Uh, yeah, I was thinking in terms of City ones, perhaps the, the one at Peterborough away to... Yeah, that wasn't bad. I rain. quite liked my one um, against Cardiff, actually, the 1-2. Yeah. The left foot played the 1-2 with Antoine. Just the build-up to it and then the finish as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that was, uh, that was a nice one. So plenty of good ones. Hopefully some more soon. I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully uh, in a couple of days. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. No worries. Dan White there with Chris Martin. And apologies as well if you are tuning in on Robin's TV tonight. There were a few audio issues, but hopefully we've rectified those tonight and everything else from this point onwards will be nice and smooth. And a big shout out to some of you that are watching sort of domestically and around the world as well. We've got Dan BS3 who's checked in from Lanzarote, Dean from South Africa, Tom is watching on as well. So good to have you along with us and hopefully Bristol City will get the three points tonight. Uh, Neil. Looking ahead to tonight's game, we heard from Chris Martin there. He, I guess he kind of um, plays as a bit of a foil to Semenyo and, and Vyman. Those two will grab the headlines, but he's, his role as part of that three is so important. I think the Middlesbrough game, he stood out. He was, his first point of contact was phenomenal. Uh, the number of you know, head, headers he won, flick-ons, um, holding the ball up, and basically he's a pivot to, uh, 
target man. So yeah, he's, he was very influential there. Hopefully he'll be the same again. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who scores the goals, as long as we get the goals. Yeah, absolutely. So and he was winning header after header oh, on Saturday defensively. And Jeju as well was that kind of uh, defensive unit that Bristol City needed as an extra defender from set pieces totally. at times. And now Chris Martin yep. fills that void too. The game's won and lost in both boxes. So if he can score him in one and save him at the other, happy days. Absolutely. But it's what he does in the, field, in the middle of the field, the link-up play, the target man, the, you know, the, the set-off and spin. And yeah, massive influence on the on the weekend there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Bristol City will be hoping to get back uh, to winning ways at home against Coventry City. The last time we beat them was back in uh, 2020 on the opening day of the season. Jamie Patterson got us off to a quick start, so let's relive the action. First meeting since 2015, and we are underway at Ashton Gate. Coventry unbeaten in the league since December. This is Jeju. And Naki Wells is away. And in the middle, Jamie Patterson. He scored 20 seconds into the game. And Bristol City are up and running. What a start for the home side. Coventry caught cold. Naki Wells looks up. Perfect ball. Emphatic finish. And City have a very early lead. Bristol, that is. Paskin Field. Sharp turn. And Coventry are in here. Callum O'Hare. It won't fall for them. Yes, it will. It falls for Gordon. And Matty Gordon in the 33rd minute has equalised. No more than Coventry deserve. It's Gordon with the turn, playing in O'Hare. And Gordon, feeding on scraps, makes it 1 1. O'Hare looked up. Perhaps that should have been cleared. a bit of room out there and there's Callas well oh, that's a new for team Thomas Callas his first club back to international duty included in the lineup, and it pays off Patterson swings it in Callas volleying it home Thomas Callas had been named uh, captain just a couple of hours before kick-off at that point. Grab the winner that day. Hopefully he can find the score sheet again this evening. Uh, Neil, looking ahead to this one, uh, Tim Close has come in to the side, made a massive impact. And it was nice to see the bond that Dan Bentley and Tim Close seem to have forged already. Obviously, the full 90 minutes together the other night. And that's, a, I guess, a reassuring combination at the back. Two real strong leaders that are very vocal as well. Tim, when he first came in, trained with us with the 23s and yeah, he stood out straight away. His, his leadership, didn't know the lads, willing to speak and help them through the training sessions. Yeah, he's a true leader, like I say, with a vast amount of experience. So really, really good, real positive. And another player at the back that came on and made a bit of a cameo appearance the other day was Robbie Cundy. Big frame, looks like the sort of player you'd want to be playing at the back on a more regular basis. He came into the 23s as well, but he's had to bide his time, but he seems to be impressing Pearson. He did, and like you say, he's been a big help to us. So we, we had to take him off against QPR and it made a big difference. You know, potentially, I think it went to a 4-3 conceded without him there. Um, yes, he's a, another big influence. He's a big frame and he's a good first point contact to get those defensive headers in. Fantastic. Well, hopefully we won't rely on him too much uh, later crossed. on in the 90 minutes. Uh, right, now it's time for us to say goodbye to those of you that are watching tonight on YouTube and Facebook.